Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Your boy Andrew here. It's an exciting time because we are right about to dive into Euro 2020. Technically, it's Euro 2021, but they're still deciding to call it Euro 2020. Whatever the case, we're about to see some awesome European international football. I am quite excited. I hope you're excited. What we're doing, pretty straightforward, trying to get the perfect bracket. Just like March Madness, we're going through selecting every single team, how they're going to finish, and eventually picking a winner. Let's dive right in, baby. Our first group stage, Sweden, Turkey, the Welsh, and the Italians. I do think that Italy is a very underrated and solid team. I think Benucci or Bernadeschi, one of their decent players, did just suffer an injury and is now questionable to make the squad. I do still think that they're going to be solid and make a pretty decent run depending on who they go up against. But with that all being said, I think Italy takes the number one spot in Group A. Now the remaining three teams, I think they're all pretty much on a level playing field. I did watch the Swiss beat the United States, so I don't love to see that. I am pumped to see Gareth Bale, the Welshman, Dan James as well. I'm a huge fan of Dan James, plays for Manchester United out in the wing. I wish he would play more. Ole, I want Dan James to play more. Play him. Now, with that all being said, I'm going to put Switzerland taking the second spot. Gareth Bale and Co., number three, and Turkey, number four. That's a tough group to break down. I mean, after Italy, it can go any which way. The unique part about this Euro is that number three team. So if they rank third in one of the groups, they can still end up advancing. So I know that we have to eventually go through and select some of those third teams that still will make it to the knockout stages. But Group B, here we go. Russia, Belgium, Denmark, Finland. If you don't have Belgium in the number one spot in Group B, I'm not going to be able to help you with this. Belgium has a stack squad. They're golden generation. They're in their prime right now. This will probably be the last major tournament where they have all of their stars performing at 100%. That means Belgium absolutely goes number one. From here, similar to Group A, the second, third, and fourth teams, they're all at a similar level. I do think, though, Denmark has some stars that will help carry them above the rest. So Denmark, I'm gonna put them in the number second position. Now Russia and Finland. Russia, they kind of sneak under the radar. I don't know a lot about Russian football. I feel like that's the majority of people that are out there, especially Americans. Americans don't know much about football in general. Just look at our system. But I think that Russia is a solid squad, so I'm going to put Russia making an appearance in the number third spot, and Finland, sorry, gents, you're number four. Onward to Group C. Austria, Macedonia, Ukraine, Netherlands. Again, there's another team that stands out. The Netherlands, they have a pretty solid squad as well. A lot of young players, a lot of players that are starting to get into their prime. They don't have Virgil van Dijk for the Euros. That is going to hurt them. I think that will prevent them from making a super deep drive into this tournament. But for me, that will allow them to get that first seed. Netherlands finishing top in their group. And I'm going to jump right to the fourth spot, Macedonia. I'm sorry. The Northern Macedonians. You're cool. My grandmother is from Macedonia back in the good old days, but they just don't have the star power to compete in this group. 
Ukraine. They do have a few solid players, but they're going to finish third for me. And Austria taking home the second spot. Group D, what is good? Scotland, England. Love to see that rivalry right there. Croatia and the Czech Republic. This is a pretty solid group. I think this one is going to be exciting to watch. Croatia and England, that is going to be a duel. They both are very solid. England, very highly rated. I think they're going to make a decent run in this tournament. It depends who they come up against because there are some really solid squads. This Euros is going to be very exciting to watch. But for me, Czech Republic taking the fourth spot, finishing third, Scotland. Would love to see Scotland do something wild in this tournament. They could be my Cinderella story. We'll have to see how that goes. Now it comes down to the one and two spots. Both of them are going to make it through ultimately. But is England going to do well enough to finish first in Group D? Now this will be big because whoever finishes first versus second will follow a different path and potentially play easier teams depending on where they finish. I do think that Croatia is going to finish top in Group D, and England will finish second. That could be controversial. I do think that England will be happy finishing second, and I'm excited to see the matchup between England and Croatia. That's going to be good. Group E, we're starting with Poland. They're my squad. I'm Polish, of course. My brother, obviously, by default, is also Polish, so we love it. We're also English, too. Like our lineage, we're of course American, but our historical lineage from those two companies, so. Companies? I misspoke, okay? We're rooting for one of them to win. Would love to see that. Robert Lewandowski, he's your boy. He's gotta have a good tournament. Coming off a historic season. He's gonna be firing on all cylinders. I think Glick is out though. I think it was a knee injury, so he is not going to be competing in the Euros. That makes me a little nervous. Even though he hasn't performed amazing on the international stage, he is a solid striking partner to pair with Robert Lewandowski. Now, I don't know who's going to be that other individual, but I still think that they have enough firepower. And with Lewandowski just performing so well in front of goal, Poland take the top spot. I'm editing my Euro prediction video, and when I was talking about Poland, I realized that I said Glick, but I meant to say Milik. Milik is the one with the injured knee, so that is the strike partner that will not be there for Poland. Could be rough for Lewandowski and co. We'll see how it goes, but it is Milik that's missing. That could be a controversial decision as well, simply because Spain, who I'm going to put in number two spot, they also have a solid squad, not the intense immaculate squad with Xavi, Iniesta, all of those individuals. I do still believe they're going to make a solid run in this tournament. I'm putting them at two because Robert Lewandowski, he's Superman, always taking my number one spot. Now it comes down to Sweden. I do believe in my heart of hearts that Sweden is going to take the third spot. Now, with Sweden, they don't have Ibrahimovic. He's not playing in the Euros either. Technically, he's retired from international football, but has talked about coming back, and I don't really know all the drama that goes on in Ibra's life. But I'm going to mark Sweden for three and Slovakia to take the fourth spot. Now, for the group of death. Portugal, France, Germany, and Hungary. We're going to get the one individual out of the way. Hungary, I'm sorry. I've been to your country. It's awesome. You're just not going to be able to compete against those other three massive squads. So Hungary, you're taking the four spot, bottom of the group. I wish I had better news for you. Now, how on earth are you supposed to predict how this is going to go out? So Portugal, defending champions here in the Euros, I think they have a really good squad. And a lot of their players are currently playing very well. Plus Bruno Fernandes, my goodness, pairing with Cristiano Ronaldo, Diego Jota. They have an awesome squad. France, World Cup champions. Their depth is insane. And I know a lot of people are pegging France to take home the victory in the entire tournament. And I can't blame them. Now Germany, this is Lowe's final tournament in charge of Germany. 
I think he's been an awesome coach. Now he knows that he is on his way out, so I think that he is going all in, picking the best lineups possible, not even worrying about developing youth or anything like that because he's out, so he wants to win this tournament. For me, I think that is going to influence a lot of results. So that means we're going to start with the third position here. I'm hurting myself right now, but I think that Portugal are going to finish third. It, it hurts. I, I think they have the ability to go all the way with the depth that they have in their squad. Plus, can you ever bet against Cristiano Ronaldo? The answer is no. France, you're going to take the number one spot for me. It's just going to be tough to beat this squad, especially if they're firing on all cylinders. And Germany, that leaves them in the number two spot. Now, we have... To select the four best third place teams that will advance to the knockout stage like we mentioned in the beginning here out of the third place teams who do we think will make it through wales russia ukraine scotland sweden portugal obviously portugal they're going to make it through i do believe wales will also make it through russia Russia, I feel like Russia, Russia has something going for them. And Sweden, Ukraine and Scotland, I'm sorry. I would love Scotland to make the Cinderella run. There are just so many squads this Euros that have amazing players that are playing very well. They're in form right now. Here we are. It's the knockout stage. Who will be advancing Belgium versus Sweden, while I would love to see some underdogs make it through, this is not the time for that. Belgium will be advancing. Italy versus Austria. For some reason, I feel like Austria is going to do something a little crazy in this tournament. However, I can't bet against Italy. Italy has such a great squad. Young, but does have some interesting experienced players as well. Benucci, their center back, Chiellini, they really do have some solid players. It's a cool mix of young versus old. I think that's going to go very well for them. France and Wales. Fun matchup. I would love to see Wales progress, but France, I mean, they're going to be going almost all the way, if not all the way, right? Here is where it gets interesting. England and Spain. Now, if the U.S. was playing in this tournament, I would probably just shove them all the way through because I love them and it's my nationality. Now with England, that's where my mom's side of my family is from, so I have lineage. Like My family is from the whole city area, so I kind of support a whole city. Are they going to be good enough to beat Spain? They do have a stacked squad. It would make sense that they would be able to advance. And Spain is not as powerful as they used to be, but they still have some great players. When it comes down to it, I think that England's depth is what will help them advance. Now, this is because we already know Trent Alexander-Arnold was in question to even make the squad. That's not even a thing that should be happening, but does get injured. They have a plethora of right backs that can step in and absolutely 100% be competitive starters. I think for that reason, the depth that they have, I'm going to select England in this one. Poland versus Russia. If this matchup ultimately ends up coming true, Poland, I'm Poland for you. I think you can make a run in the way that this bracket breaks down. You're beating Russia. You're going on. Lewandowski, let's do this. Croatia versus Germany, another insane matchup. Like I've talked about, Yogi Love, I think his dedication to try to win his final tournament with Germany is going to be able to pull him through, and that Germany squad will advance. Netherlands and Portugal, why you got to do this to me? Netherlands, not the old guard like we're used to seeing, However, a lot of solid young players and some that are starting to hit their prime. 
Now, Portugal really does have such a good squad. I think I have to go Portugal just because Cristiano Ronaldo, Bruno Fernandes, Diego Jota, that is going to be tough to beat. I'm going to go Portugal over the Netherlands. I think if Virgil van Dijk was playing, I may have changed this decision, but without one of the best, if not the best, defender in the world, I think Portugal will be able to advance. Switzerland and Denmark. That is an interesting matchup. I feel as though I'm going to be a bit biased toward Denmark because two reasons. One, I like Ericsson. He's just a cool attacking midfielder. And Switzerland beat the U.S., so I don't love that. For those two reasons, Denmark advances. Let us go back to the top here, into the quarterfinals, Belgium versus Italy. My brain is now starting to hurt. Belgium's striker, Lukaku, is in such good form. After winning Serie A, do you bet against him? I think by this point in time, hopefully, for Belgium's sake, De Bruyne will be back. And that may be the key difference to allow more of an attacking presence where Lukaku can get better service. I think that will be the difference. If De Bruyne is back and able to do De Bruyne things, Belgium will advance over Italy. I think the mixture of Italy's experience and youngsters is awesome. However, they've not played together a ton. That leads me to believe Belgium will sneak by. I love Italy. I love their squad. I'm excited for the future. I think Italy is going to be a force to be reckoned with. In the next World Cup, I do think here Belgium advances. France and England. For all of you English fans out there, I'm sorry. If this situation happens, what are you supposed to do? You're going to have to play lights out football to be able to beat France. France is so deep. So is England. This is going to be the matchup that we all want to see, whether it happens early. I would probably have preferred it to happen later on. So what happens here? Guys, could you let me know what you think in the comments? I feel like it's a flip of a coin. Both of these teams have the ability to win the Euros. But if I have to put my money on any team, it'll probably be France. France over England, if I'm being rational about it, they're going through. Poland and Germany. Oh, am I going to let my bias get the better of me? Simply because my last name is Polish, Schwalik. My lineage is from Poland. My great-grandparents are both from Poland. I've been to Poland, visited the ancestral homeland, stayed right across the street from a 24-hour pierogi shop. That's a lot of bias. Germany. I've been to Germany as well. I do have some ancestors from Germany. And Germany really does have a decent squad. And I don't know if Poland is deep enough to be able to beat Germany. I think with that being said, I'm going to vote and put Germany through. This will be a great matchup. I would love to see Lewandowski just ball out, go insane, and lead his team to the next round. But for me, Kimmich, he is in form and maybe one of the best midfield slash Wingbacks. He was just playing wingback in a recent game. I think he is one of the best players right now in the world. So that ultimately, mixed with the rest of the German team, has them going through. Portugal and Denmark. This one I feel like is a bit easier for me. I really do rate Portugal. I think that they have an immaculate squad with a bunch of players that are in form right now. That puts them through. Semis. We got four teams. Here we are. Belgium and France. Oh my goodness. Two powerhouses. 
I'm really tempted, if De Bruyne is back, to pick Belgium. But France does have more depth. So if injuries do become a thing and teams need to play through, who would I pick? I feel like if I, in the Germany-Poland game, don't rate Poland as high simply because I feel as though Robert Lewandowski is the key player. I don't know if they can... I don't know if they have the depth to get through with just Lewandowski. Belgium is certainly more deep in terms of their roster than Poland. But I feel like Lukaku will be the key for them. And he has been playing lights out. And Griezmann for France, I feel like could be a key player, but he just hasn't been the same since moving to Barcelona. But do you bet against Mbappe? I feel like you don't. So I'm going to put France to go through to the final. Now, France, who are you going to be playing? You're going to be playing Germany. You're going to be playing Portugal. (sighs) If I had to say who I would want to go through of these two, I think I would select Germany. Simply because Yogi Love, I would love to see him win this whole thing as he is saying farewell to the German national team. But Portugal, defending champs as well. (sighs) Cristiano Ronaldo, if he does show up, would be awesome because they would need that, I think, to get past Germany. I don't know if Portugal has the manpower to outclash Germany, especially when Love is building a squad to win. For me, it's Germany that goes through. And here we are. The Euro 2020 finals. France versus Germany. Now, a lot of people may be won't think or rate Germany this high, think that they'll make it this far all the way to the final. It's been a tough road, and I would love nothing more to see Germany win this against France. But I'm not sure I can bet against France. If they continue to fire on all cylinders, Conte in the middle... He has been playing so well. And now, in the conversation for the Ballon d'Or, get that out of my face. First off, Robert Lewandowski should have won last year and should win this year. If he does not, there's something wrong. That France team is just so good. For me... France is just so freaking good, and it would be pretty neat to see them win the Euros and the World Cup. I think on that alone, I'm going to have to pick France. I don't know if Germany, with some of those older players, will be able to stand up against the might of France. And I feel France is still at the peak of their powers. They are still going in 100% with this ultimate squad that helped them win the World Cup. That's it. France has done it. France wins the 2020-2021 Euros. It's been a wild ride. This, (laughs) This prediction video has been a wild ride. I had to make some tough decisions that I didn't love, but is is what it is. France taking home the victory over Germany in the final. Regardless of what happens, I'm super pumped for Euro 2020 slash 2021 because there are going to be some wonderful matchup no matter how this plays out. I will sit down and make a reaction video to see how my picks ultimately ended up playing out. If it does, this is going to be a fun tournament to watch. But I will... See you all on our YouTube channel very soon. We're excited to be back doing awesome football slash soccer content, getting to watch some amazing soccer as of late as well. 
it's a good time to be a football slash soccer fan. And I will see all of you in the next video. Have fun watching the Euros. We'll have some awesome more content coming out back here on YouTube. I will see you very soon. Peace.